Hello, here's a video about um, constructing triangles. Um, there are different circumstances in which you might be asked to construct or, or draw a, a triangle, and, and this video is about um, the circumstance where you're given the length of one of the sides and the size of two of the angles. Let's just work through a couple of examples and you can get on with it. Um, let's imagine a, being asked to draw a triangle such as the one that's sketched in the top left of the screen here. So we're given one of the sides being two, seven centimetres and two of the angles, the two angles associated with that side, um, as being 40 and 50 degrees. First step, draw the seven centimetre side. Uh, I recommend drawing a nice long line, longer than seven centimetres, marking a point at one end of the line, getting your lovely ruler that is not more than seven centimetres long, setting it up on the line. Oh, let's just try and get this as accurate as we can. Marking a spot seven centimetres away, using the ruler to, to do that exactly correctly, uh, and taking the ruler away again. Oops, let's not do that. Let's do that. There we go. Um, so there we go. So we now have two points marked on the line that are seven centimetres apart. We can label that seven centimetres, because that's how long it is. Um, to measure the angles, you're going to need a protractor, aren't you? A protractor, an angle measuring device. Make it a bit bigger so we can see the numbers clearer. To set the protractor up, and you should know how to do this, but if you don't, let's just recap quickly. Um, the, um, the baseline of the protractor needs to be set up on the line from which you are going to measure your angle. And the, the sights, if you like, the gun sights in the middle of the protractor need to be set up on the corner that you want to construct the angle. Um, we then need to mark 40 degrees up from that line. So we're going up from the zero that is on the line we are measuring from. And that, in this case, given that there are two scales in this protractor, will be the zero on the inner scale. See the zero there? Oops. <laughs> I love technology. I'm really good with it. If I put the arrow in and drop the protractor down again, you'll see the zero. Can you see it down there? That's the zero we want to measure from. Always start measuring from zero. If we measure from zero, we go around 10, 20, 30, up to 40. There it is. See 40 on the inside? I'll get rid of that out of the way. Because you want to get your pencil and you want to mark that point that's in line with 40. Take the protractor away. Get your ruler out. I'm not going to use my ruler for this because, um, frankly, it's <laughs> too complicated. You need to get your ruler and measure very, very carefully, exactly from the corner. Draw a line through that point and make sure you draw it longer than you think you're actually going to need it. And we'll come back to that in the next example. Having done that, we now have a 40 degree angle here. And you can label that as well if you like. We then have to draw a 50 degree angle from the other side of that line. So again, you're going to use the protractor, set it up on the baseline, get the gun sights in the middle exactly on the end of that line as marked by you. And measure from the zero here on the line that we're measuring from, which in this case will be the outer, the outer scale. <laughs> Shall I draw the arrow? I'm not going to bother. Um, you see the zero on the outer line that's actually on the line that we're measuring from. And we're going to count rounds 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees. You don't need to do all those dots, of course. I'm just doing it on the board so you can see me, see me measuring. Take the tractor away. And again, get your ruler out. And very carefully, very carefully... Draw a line that goes exactly from the end of the baseline through that point. Probably doesn't need to be that long actually thinking about it, because all you need to do is to make sure that the two lines that you've drawn intersect as possible to cross. Uh, let's move that out of the way and get rid of it. Okay, we've now constructed that um, triangle as required. If you needed to, you could measure the remaining angle and the other two sides. You might be asked to label all the sides and angles. Even without measuring that third angle, if you know something about the angles in a triangle, you'll know that that third angle should be 90 degrees or a right angle, because hopefully you know that the angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. And since 40 and 50 is 90, the third one should be a right angle. And that's actually something you should do, actually, anyway, is measure that last angle to make sure it is what it should be, because that will tell you whether you've actually constructed the angles and the triangle generally, whether you constructed it um, accurately enough. Let's do another example where we'll need to put a little bit more thought into the lines that we draw as we, as we construct it. So we've got an 8 centimetre line with two angles 13 and 110 degrees. We'll come back to that sketch in a minute, but first of all, 
draw an eight centimeter line by drawing a line longer than eight centimeters. Mark a point on that line. Uh, let's get our ruler. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> get the ruler. Take it down here. Set it up on the baseline and mark another spot. Ten centimeters away. And there we go. Two points. Come on. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? I might just change that. I'm going to go. Uh, 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 uh. There we are. Two points. 10 centimeters apart. There we go. And label it 10 centimeters. Clearly, you're going to do it much more carefully than I did there. And now we need to do all those, um, the 30 degree angle and the 110 degree angle. Can I ask you to look at the sketch again? And if you look at that sketch, clearly it's not drawn to scale. Um, and it will be obvious to you that one part in particular is obviously inaccurate. Angle on the left, 30 degrees. Substantially less than a right angle. Not got a problem with that. But the 110 degree angle is not going to look like that one, is it? Because 110 degrees is more than a right angle. So in actual fact, the angle on the right, if I get my red pen out and mark it, is going to be a little bit more like that on our triangle, isn't it? And the 30 degree angle will probably be a little bit steep than that. So the triangle we're actually going to draw is going to end up looking a bit like that, isn't it? Which means that when we draw our 30 degree angle, or draw and measure it, or measure and draw our 30 degree triangle, which we'll do right now, Let's set up the protractor, get the sights exactly on the point, get the baseline exactly on the line. Measure from the inner circle, the inner scale rather, because um, we measure from zero all the time. So it's 10, 20, 30 is here. Get the protractor out of the way. When we draw this line, we're going to want to draw this nice and long. It's going to need to go beyond the other side of that line, isn't it? Because the 110 degree angle is going to come back away from the left hand point. So if I draw to there, I think uh, hopefully that'll be long enough. Let's measure the 110 degrees on the other side. Let's do it properly <laughs> without drawing lines over the board. Whee! Let's go, here we go. Set the tractor up, get the sights exactly right, get the baseline exactly where it belongs. There it is, 110 degrees. There it is there. Come on, machine. There we go. <laughs> right, there it is. It'll be possible for you to draw the dot more accurately again because um, you won't be using a stupid computer and you won't be stupid. <laughs> so you'll have two things where you have an advantage over me. Um, mark your line and boom, there we go. 110 degrees there and 30 degrees here. What should the third angle be? That's right, 110 and 30 is 140, angles in the triangle up to 180, so the fourth angle, the third angle should be 40 degrees. Get your protractor out, measure it, make sure you've done it accurately. That's how you construct triangles when given one side and two angles. I'll, I'll make another uh, video um, to talk about how you can do it when you're given um, more side measurements and fewer angles. Thank you.